Welcome, everybody. We are going to talk today here about the AL Abacus using it for four digit addition and subtraction. I'm going to be your host today. I am Kathleen Cotter Lawler. And again, let's uh, get started on four digit addition and subtraction using the AL Abacus. A couple housekeeping notes, real quick here. Uh, with webinar information, the sound is muted. So you do not need to worry about any of your background noises, so don't give that a second thought. And second of all, if you have any questions as we go along, use the chat box, which is right here, right there, um, to type any questions. I may not answer your questions immediately, uh, either because A, I want to finish a thought, or B, because your question is coming up. But I will address all questions as we progress throughout our, our time here today. All right, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I'm going to be pulling my information here today from the Right Start Math Curriculum Level B Lessons, Second Edition, and Level C Lessons. So everything I'm going to be talking about comes from these two uh, manuals. All right, we're going to first start out by introducing the side two of the AL Abacus. This particular lesson is coming from Level B. You can see my note right up there. This is coming from Level B. The second side of the abacus, uh, if those of you that have one, if you want to follow along, you're more than welcome to, but it has numbers across the top. Everything, all the beads pushed to the bottom is cleared. Any beads entered towards the top in this column, the thousands, they're each worth a thousand. Here's my hundreds, tens, and ones. Now, there's a note in the lesson that I want to talk about here because it's very important. It says that side two of the AL Abacus emphasizes trading and prepares the child for adding and subtracting four-digit numbers on paper. And quantities on the side, second side are entered from the left to right for the following reasons. First, we read from left to right. We say our numbers, except the backwards teens, we say our numbers from left to right. We enter quantities on a calculator from left to right, and we do mental arithmetic from left to right. So let's approach this from left to right. Okay, so let's enter in 4,352. So 4,000. Now note that we're not entering actually 4,000 beads, we're entering the number of thousands. So here we have 4,000, so I have four beads in the thousand columns. So 4,350, also known as 510, so 50 and 2. This is how we'd enter, this is what 4,352 looks like. All right, let's do another number here. Let's do 6,083. So 6,000, there's my six. I have no hundreds, 8, 10, so 80, and 3. Okay, everybody's comfortable now with how we enter the numbers and how, how the beads and the abacus works on here. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at doing some bead trading activities. And what we do with this is we take a deck of cards, and we're using our basic deck here, but you could use any deck if you wanted to. And I first, I turn over the first card, it's a seven. And these are gonna be numbers from zero to 10. So first number I turn over is a seven. I enter seven beads. Next card is a six. I enter six and combine it. But here we wanna see, do we need to trade? Since I'm over 10, I'm gonna trade these 10 beads for this bead that represents 10. So I have representing 10, and this is 10 beads, and I'm going to trade them. One, two, three, trade. Now, I'm not worried that 7 plus 6 is 13. That's not what I'm doing here. What I'm doing is I'm just practicing trading. So I'm going to turn over the next card, 9, enter 9 beads, and push them together. Am I over 10? Yes, and you can see that because of the color change. So I'm going to trade these 10 beads for this bead over here that represents 10. 
and I keep going. And as you can see, when we get to do this, the children get the idea of trading and how to do that process. Now, a couple questions that I always get from people as we go through and we talk, talk about this, they want to know, why do I always keep the two columns even? Why do I not just put a nine on one row and five on the next? Well, let's do this. If I have eight and three, can you tell from looking at this, do I need to trade? It's not obvious, but if I were to do it this way, I have eight and three more. You can see, again, by the colors, that I'm over 10. You can see I have 10 and one more. Whereas when I did it the other way, let me go back here, you can't quickly see that, that you're over 10. That's why we keep them even. How do you accurately identify a group of 10? This is another question that people ask a lot. If I pull down these 10 here, so I'm getting ready to do a trade, you can quickly identify that it's 10 because you can see that there's a mirror. Notice how my yellow beads are mirroring with my blue beads down below. Let me do another one real quick. So I'm gonna pull 10 down, getting ready to identify my 10. Look at my mirror. See how my top yellow beads mirror my bottom blue beads. Now, let's just say that I incorrectly identify 10. So I've actually got eight separated, but let's say I thought that was 10. Look at my mirror. My yellow beads on the top are not matching my blue beads on the bottom half. So this is not correct. Now, to change it, I would do it this way. Check my mirror. My top blue are matching my bottom blue. So that's a quick way to help you identify a grouping of 10. All right, let's look at adding some numbers using the side, the second side of the abacus. So let's start with a really super simple one. And we've kind of done this with the B trading, but eight plus six. Eight and six more, push them together. I can see my answer is 10 and four more, 14. But again, I can trade these 10 beads for this bead over on the side that represents 10, and my answer is still 1, 10, 4, or 14. Let's do a slightly bigger number. Let's do 37 plus 18. So I'm gonna put on 3, 10, 7, so 37, plus 8 more equals, I push it together. This is a little bit harder to see, so let's trade these 10 beads here for this bead that represents 10. So I'm trading these 10 for this bead that represents 10. I trade, and now I can clearly see my answer is 4, 10, 5, or 45. All right, let's take this into adding four digit numbers. We're going to pull out the big guns. Now, actually, one quick note. Notice that this is coming from level B. Level B is kind of a first grade, second grade. Our children are doing this four-digit addition in first grade because they understand the way the numbers go together. There's nothing to memorize. There's no procedures. It's more of a process, and the children love this. All right, so we're going to do 3,600. 5, 10, 50, 8. Now, I know I talked about always working from left to right, and frequently we will do that, but we're going to start out here by starting from the right and work backwards. So I'm going to add 8. Am I over 10? Yes. So I'm going to trade these 10 beads for this bead that represents 10. I'm going to trade it, one, two, three, trade. And now I can record. How many ones do I have? I have six. And didn't I do something else? I gave myself another 10. So I'm going to indicate that right up here. So I'm going to indicate I have one more 10. I'm going to put it in the tens column with the other tens. All right, let's add my three 10 now. So here's 310. Do I need to trade? 
No. So I can record. How many tens do I have? I have nine. All right, next one, 700. 700. Do I need to trade? Yes. So I'm going to trade 10 hundreds for 1,000. And then what, now one quick note, you want the children to put these halfway down. I'm not just doing this to show you, the children actually do it this way, they do it halfway down, they get it ready. So I get my 10 hundreds ready and my 1,000 ready, and then I do one, two, three trade, and I'll do it with uh, one hand pushing it down and the other hand pushing the bead up. So one, two, three, trade. So now we can see that we've got this done. And we're going to record how many hundreds do I have? I have three. Oops, excuse me here. I have three. And didn't I do something else? I gave myself another thousand. So I'm going to indicate my thousand right up here with the other thousands. Let's do my last two thousand. Two thousand. And record. That was super easy. Most children who learn to add on the abacus transition to the paper and pencil algorithm without any further instruction because they understand the process. Any questions? Okay, I'm going to keep going here then. We're going to look at subtracting four digit numbers. This is being taken from level C. And let's start out by, we've got two, we're going to take 6,825 and subtract 2,637. So I'm going to start by entering my 2,000, or excuse me, I'm sorry, I said that wrong, my 6,800, 210, 5. Now we're going to start from the left. So we're going to start, because children like to prefer to work from the left to right, so we're going to start with my 2,000. So I'm going to subtract 2,000. But before I record it, I want to look ahead and say, should I save a thousand for trading before I record it? So I'm going to look. Is my 6,637 less than 825? Yes, it is. So I do not need to save a thousand for trading. So I can record. How many thousands do I have now? I have four. All right, let's go on to the 600. Let's subtract 600. And before we record, we ask the question, should I save 100 for trading? Well, let's look. Oh, goodness, yes, 37 is more than 25. So, yes, we need to save one. So I'm going to make a trade. I'm going to trade my 100 for 10 tens. Now I can record. How many hundred do I have? One. And how many tens do I have now? I actually have 12. And I'm going to indicate that by putting a little one right up there. So indicating I have 12 tens. Okay, let's subtract my 310 now, my 30. So I subtract, get ready to subtract my 30. And again, before we record, we ask, do I need to save a 10 for trading? Oh, yes, I do, because I can't subtract 7 from 5, so I need to make a trade. I'm going to trade 110 for 10, 10 ones. Now I can record. How many 10 do I have? I have 8. And how many ones do I have now? I actually have 15, so again, I'm going to put a little one in front of my 15, indicating that, yes, I've got more than five. I've got 15 now, ones. Subtracting my seven, seven, and record, eight. There's my answer. Now, let me do this again because I know some of you are going, oh, wow, let me try this again. Well, let's let's go ahead and do it. We're going to have a different problem now. We're going to say 7,094 minus 3,528. 
Okay, start out by entering my 7,000. There's no hundreds in here. 9, 10, 94. Again, starting from the left, I'm going to start by subtracting 3,000. Subtract 3,000. And the first thing we want to do, or before we record, we want to look and see, do we need to save 1,000 for trading? Well, yeah, pretty obvious in this case. So let's do a trade. I'm going to trade my 1,000 for 10 hundreds. Trade. Now I can record. How many thousands do I have? I have three. And how many hundreds do I have? I actually have 10. Again, indicating with the little one up on top there that we're so familiar with. So I have 10 hundreds. All right, now we can subtract my 500. 500, and we check. Do I need to save 100 for trading? Nope, we're good this time. I can subtract 28 from 94, so we're good. So I can record. How many hundreds do I have? I have five, and it's recorded. Okay, let's subtract 210 or 20. So there's my 20. Pull it down. Do I need to save a 10 for trading? Yes, I do. So quickly do the trade. I'm going to trade a 10 for 10 ones. Now I can record. How many 10s do I have? I have six. And, I get, and then look again. How many ones do I have? I actually have 14. Subtract my eight. And record six. There's the answer. It's different from the way you and I learned, but it helps the children understand why we're doing what we're doing with the borrow and caring thing. It also works with the way that the human brain works. We like to do things from left to right. So we're not going backwards against what the child instinctively wants to do and has been taught to do. The A. Abacus, the second side, emphasizes trading and it assists the child's understanding of adding and subtracting with four digit numbers. The Abacus is the cornerstone of the Right Start Math program. And of course, today's lessons we pulled out of lessons B and C. And just to remind you all, we're very proud to say that we have been given awards for the Right Start Math program. We received the Mary Pride Publisher, um, excuse me, the Mary Pride uh, Readers Award in 2014. We got first place and in 2015. And the 2016 voting, I believe, will start in probably a couple weeks here. I imagine that's going to be coming up shortly. We also, in 2014, received the Excellence in Education Award from the old schoolhouse. In conclusion, math needs to be taught so 95% is understood and only 5% memorized. And Dr. Cotter says, our goal as teachers of mathematics is to help our children transform, expand, and refine these beginning ideas into deeper mathematical thinking. What questions can I answer for anybody? I realize that you're a little bit handicapped because you do need to type instead of talk, so I know there's a little bit more of a delay. I will stay on here and answer any questions that you come up with. We will also have a copy of this um, online, and you can watch it at a later time if you would like. Melanie says, no questions. Thank you. You are most welcome, Melanie. Well, thank you, everybody, for your time today. And again, I will stay stay here for a little bit if you need, anyone has any questions and trying to figure out the best way to compose it.